What's going on everybody? It's Dave here from Profitable.Tools where I show you how to start an online business using off-the-shelf software, not expensive developers. Today, I'm talking about email, specifically the email that you send from your website. So this could come in the form of transactional email, which is one-to-one. -one. Someone requests something like a password reset or a receipt and your website sends it to them. Or it could also come in the form of bulk email where you write a newsletter from your website using a plugin like Autonomy or a Fluent CRM and that goes out to hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of people all with a single click. When setting up an email service like this, I'm looking for four different things. First of all, it's got to hit the inbox. If my important emails don't hit the customer's inbox, the service is not worthwhile to me. Second of all, it's got to be secure, preferably using an API connection from my website over to the sending server so that if something does fail, the website will be able to try again. Third, it has to be cost effective, especially when I'm reselling this as a service to our clients. I want something that is affordable so they feel like they're getting a good value. A lot of transactional email providers are quite expensive. One of the reasons I've recommended Amazon SES in the past is because it is dirt cheap and has really good deliverability. However, it falls short on point number four, which is very easy to set up. Amazon SES, as much as I love it, is a pain in the neck, especially if you're an agency owner and you want to have multiple clients all under one account. They do have a sub account system, but it's very convoluted and would take a lot of time to set up, especially if you're doing this with any sort of volume. So that's why in this video, I'm really excited to talk about a solution that was right in front of me the whole time. I just didn't realize it. And that is Elastic Email. Elastic email is affordable, maybe not quite as affordable as Amazon SES, but it is far less expensive than other providers like Postmark or SendGrid. If you have a single website, you might want to look at their email API plan, which is just 10 cents for every 1000 emails, which is actually the same price as Amazon SES. The difference being that you also have to pay 50 cents per day, which is not that big of a deal in my mind. It's about 15 bucks a month, but it definitely adds to the expense if you're a very low volume sender. Agencies, however, are going to love this plan, the Email API Pro plan. Now it is more expensive and I'm not really sure why the emails cost more per 1000. I'd love to see that come down and it's a dollar a day. But the real perk here is that you get sub accounts and you can actually rebuild clients from that sub account. So for example, let's say you do website care plans, you'd be able to bundle in a certain number of credits per month and then charge your clients if they go over that number of credits. This is exactly what I've been looking for as an agency for quite some time. Some time and I just didn't know that Elastic Email even offered this service. So out of my four requirements I spoke about a moment ago, so far we've checked a couple of boxes. This is an API based connection, exactly what I wanted, and it's very cheap. It's not as cheap as Amazon SES, but it's definitely affordable. The things we don't know about so far are the usability, how is it to set up, and the deliverability, is it going to hit the inbox? So let's answer those questions next. So here I am in the back end of Elastic Email. The first thing that I'm going to do is verify my domain. Let's add a sending domain here. You could also add a from address, but I want to get started by verifying the entire domain. That'll let me send emails from any address on the domain rather than just one specific email address. I'm going to choose clientamp.com here. That is my web care agency. If anyone out there is looking for some help with their WordPress website, let's go ahead and add this as a domain. All right, you can see that the domain has been added here. Next, we're going to need to actually verify it. So I'm going to click on this little I over here and you can see that there's some instructions for verifying the domain. Now, MX and DMARC already have check marks next to them, and that's because I have existing MX records and DMARC records. If you don't have these, you'll definitely need to set up at least a DMARC record. If anyone wants to know more about DMARC, leave me a comment down below. We definitely would be getting really nerdy into the email deliverability area then. All right, so really what we have to do is set up our SPF record, our DKIM, and our tracking. So let me explain these things to you. SPF is basically giving Elastic Email permission to send using your domain's name. Now you can only have one SPF record per domain, so chances are you probably already have an SPF record. What you're going to want to do is actually grab this section right here and then just insert it into your DNS record. All right, so I've copied this over and here's my Cloudflare account where I have my DNS stored. So for you, this might be something like GoDaddy or Namecheap. I'm going to go ahead and find my SPF record. I can just search for SPF and it should show up here. All right, here it is. I'm going to edit this record 
And after the last record here, I'm just going to paste in what Elastic Email gave me and hit save. Okay, so that should tick off this box right here. We'll try verifying the domain when we complete the other steps. All right, next up is DKIM. This is another form of authentication. This happens to be on the receiving server to ensure that the email being sent is authentic. So we're gonna go ahead and add this record in as a text record in our DNS settings. So I'll choose add record here. The type is a text record. There is the name. And for the value, I'll copy this string and paste it in the content section. Go ahead and hit save. The last DNS setting down here is for tracking. This is a CNAME record that is gonna allow Elastic Email to track opens on your email sent. Pretty important. Most people wanna have at least a vague idea of what their open rate is, even though it's getting a little bit skewed with uh, current Apple privacy and even Google is starting to pre-cache images. So these numbers are not super reliable, but I still recommend setting it up. So I'm gonna grab this value down here, go over to Cloudflare and I'm gonna add a new record. In this case, it's a CNAME. The name is tracking and I'll paste in the target here. Now, if you're using Cloudflare, you'll wanna turn off the proxy. If you're not using Cloudflare, you won't even see this option, so don't worry about it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Okay, this should do it. I've added all of the DNS settings. Let's go ahead and try to verify the domain. Great, it looks like the domain verified just fine. All right, only one step left. I need to be able to send emails from my website. So I'm gonna log into a WordPress website and show you how to connect up Elastic Email to the WordPress site. This is the back end of WordPress. I'm gonna go over to plugins, add new. Now, unfortunately, my favorite SMTP plugin that I've reviewed so far is Fluent SMTP, and it doesn't have support for Elastic Email quite yet, but don't be concerned because Elastic Email has their own plugin. We can go ahead and look for that, just typing in Elastic, that'd be enough. It's gonna show up here as the very first one. I'm gonna go ahead and install this and hit activate. And over here on the left-hand sidebar, we can go to the settings section of Elastic Email. Let's go ahead and set this up. It's really easy. Select Mailer. We're gonna use all WordPress emails via the Elastic Email API. Next, I'm going to need an API key from Elastic Email. So let's go ahead and grab that. We're just gonna go over to settings here and then I'm gonna choose create additional API key and I'll give this a name. I'm gonna call it client amp demo. Then under permissions, we're gonna choose plugin, which is going to be uh, somewhat limited access for third-party plugins, which is exactly what we want. And let's go ahead and create this API key. Here it is, there's my API key. I can copy this. I'm just gonna head back over to my WordPress website and paste it in. Under email type, you have two options. You can choose marketing email, which would be a bulk email. Remember that's when you're using a plugin like Autonomy or Fluent CRM, or you could switch it over to transactional email if you're not doing that type of bulk email on your website. Now, a lot of people are using a third-party service like MailChimp or ConvertKit for their marketing emails, in which case they really only need transactional emails on their website. So that should help you decide which setting to choose here. It's not really gonna make a huge difference. If you're doing both, I would tend to lead towards the marketing side of things. For this video, I'm just gonna leave it at transactional. Let's go down to the next step that we need to enter in, which is the from name. I'll enter in my name here, Dave Swift, and we'll go down to the from email address, and I'll do dave at clientamp.com. All right, let's save these changes, and I should see the connection test update here, and it does say connected and active. All right, we are ready to go. The next thing we need to do is test the deliverability to see if I can actually hit the inbox. So under Elastic Email, we'll go to Send Test, and we've got an option here to choose an email address to send to, and then a test message. So I'm just gonna paste in a recent newsletter that I sent out, and if you wanna get signed up for that newsletter, you can head over to profitable.tools. It's totally free, go ahead and get signed up. Uh, all right, so I've got that pasted in, and then instead of sending it to myself, I'm gonna use this website here, which is mail-tester.com. They give you up to three free credits a day, so you can go ahead and test out your emails to make sure that they're not identified as spammy or or that your sending IP is not identified as a blacklist. Showing up on a blacklist would be a worst case scenario for Elastic Email, because if my IP address shows up on a blacklist before I've even sent an email, that's definitely gonna mean that deliverability will be really, really difficult to improve. Okay, so what we need to do to test deliverability is to copy this email address right here. So I'm gonna click this button. It's now copied to my clipboard. Then I'll go back over to my WordPress site and paste that in in the email to section. I'll send out the test here. It'll say sending. All right, we're gonna jump back over to the mail tester website and check our score. And you can see we got a 10 out of 10 perfect score. So that is really great. Uh, love to see this. So we can go through kind of the different settings here. Uh, I can view my message. I can see in the HTML version. Spam Assassin likes us. 
so you can see some negative points here like DKIM signed. That's kind of what this testing uh, protocol does. It gives you a negative and then checks to make sure that it's there and it reimburses the point. So very impressed with the deliverability of Elastic Email. Um, super impressed with how easy it is to set up on a WordPress website. The last thing that we really need to look at is what are those reseller options like? How can I actually use this in my agency to offer it as a service to clients and make my life a little bit easier and hopefully more profitable? So to configure those settings, what we need to do is go back over to Elastic Email, choose our user account, and then choose on the account option over here. And we're gonna have three different tabs that we wanna look at. Again, these are only gonna be available to you if you're on the pro plan, the email API pro plan. The regular plan will not have any of these features that I'm about to show you. So first one is user accounts. If you have multiple team members, they're helping you set up domains. You can add them as a user here. You just simply click invite user. If you wanna have them as a view only user, or maybe you want another administrator, you can customize that. In fact, they even have a custom setting here. So you can get very granular with how you give users users permissions on your setup. So I think that's a really nice touch. The next section is for sub accounts. So this will allow you to create accounts underneath your account that you could give to your clients so they can log in and see all of their email settings in one place. Let's go ahead and set up a sub account here. So the first thing you do is go ahead and enter in an email address. I'll put in my email address here using a different domain name and create a password for them. Then you can choose whether you want an activation sent out and whether you want to let your clients use two-factor authentication. I definitely would allow them to do that. The next options are where the fun begins because this is where you can set up the quotas for your clients. So it, right here it says requires email credits. So I'm gonna turn this on and then I could give them a set number of credits that they get right out of the gates. Let's say like a thousand. And then maybe I want them to automatically get more credits every single month. Well, I could turn this on and then give them another thousand every single month. So these are monthly refill credits. Before I move on to the last section, I just wanna make it clear that if I were to turn this off, then my sub account would be able to send unlimited emails through my primary account. And then of course I would be billed for it. Now you might wanna leave it that way, that's up to you, but more than likely people are gonna to wanna to limit their clients to a certain amount. I'm aware that 1000 is a very puny amount. You'll likely have to offer at least 10 times that, maybe a great deal more than that, depending on the clients that you work with. All right, the last settings down here, email settings sounds kind of boring, but actually some fairly useful stuff. You can set a max email size so that your clients aren't just sending huge files via their um, email marketing. You'd be surprised what people try to do. So I recommend limiting this. Three is a little small in my opinion, but maybe set it to like 10 or something like that. Should handle most PDFs. Then we can set a daily limit. So let's say you're giving them, you know, 100,000 emails. You don't want them to blow that all in one day. You could set the daily limit to say, you know, five or 10,000 emails per day. The last two options down here are vital. So right here it says allow for private IP purchases. You might have a client that is sending out emails that are not really hitting the inbox. And maybe you don't wanna get involved with telling them how to improve their deliverability. That might not be your area of expertise. If you allow them to purchase their own private IP, they won't be poisoning the rest of the clients that are sending under your account. So if you notice that one particular client is getting a lot of bounces, a lot of complaints, tell them they need to buy their own IP or you won't be able to offer them bulk email services any longer. What's cool about this is by turning this on is that only their emails will be sent via this private IP address or they can actually buy multiple. Uh, so that is a really nice feature. The last setting is one that I recommend everybody turn on, which is to require a valid sending domain. So when I went through that process of authenticating for DKIM, SPF and DMARC, you make sure that your clients do that every single time so that they're not using what's called your default domain. So I'm actually gonna jump out of this screen and I'll show you what I mean. Back over in the verify domain section, if I click on my domain here that we've already verified, I can set this up as the default sender. So what this means is if someone's trying to send an email through my account, maybe they have access to my API key, but they have not verified their domain, it's gonna end up using my primary domain as the default domain. So I definitely don't recommend setting this up as like your main business domain. You might, if you wanna have a default domain, you could set up kind of like a throwaway one just to have something set up for your clients or do as I recommend, and that's just to require everybody to validate their domains. 
And the last tab we have to take a look at is this one right here that says custom branding. This is actually really cool because what it's going to allow you to do is add your own email portal where your clients can go log in and see all of their analytics and information about their email account. Let's go ahead and set this up together. I'm going to toggle this switch to turn on the custom branding, and then I'm going to need to enter in the URL that I want to use. So for me, I'm going to choose um, mail portal clientamp.com. The support link section just wants to know where to send customers if they need help. So go ahead and enter in your URL for your support page. Next up, you can set custom SMTP servers. This will mask the use of Elastic Email at all. So you can do something like your domain name, smtp.yourdomainname.com. Then set up a second one, smtp2.clientamp.com. Then the payment URL where people can actually buy stuff from you. So I'll do clientamp.com slash purchase. Then finally, a custom bounce domain. We could have actually set this up earlier when we were verifying our domain. I skipped over that section, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it up right now. I'll just say bounce.clientamp.com. We can include our logo in the footer. I really like that. And then the last section down here is to turn on single sign-on. So this is quite cool. I'm not gonna get really far into this, but basically this will allow you, if you have users logging into your app or your website already, you'd be able to set up your website as an authentication source to say that people can have access to their Elastic email account. That way they don't have to have a separate username and password to access the email portal. They can simply click once and then be transferred over to this other service. I'm not gonna mess with this right now, but it's a really nice touch that they offer it. Okay, so the next step would obviously be to save it, right? But you're gonna get an error message because you need to add DNS records for each one of the settings that you created over here. So back over to Cloudflare, I already went ahead and added in the additional DNS records that are required. Most of them are just CNAME records going to the api.elasticemail.com address, but there is the one uh, exclusion to that, which would be the bounce record, which is going to bounces.elasticemail.net. All right, that said, let's jump back over to Elastic Email and go ahead and hit save. There we go, this time it updated, so my custom dashboard is all set to go. Before I move on, I do wanna upload my logo, so I'm gonna choose edit logo here, and then just drop in my logo. There we go, looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and see what the dashboard looks like. So here we are at the custom C name that I set up. I did make a sub account. Let me go ahead and try logging into that and see what everything looks like. So as a sub account user, I'm given very much the same type of interface that I see in the primary account. It wants me to verify my domain, I like that. It recommends that I turn on two-factor authentication, I like that. I did notice that my logo looks pretty bad up here. It looks like I should swap it out for maybe a solid white color that would look a lot better. But everything else about this feels great. Now remember, this is optional. You don't have to give your clients access to this portal right away. Maybe only give it to them if they request it. If you're dealing with non-technical clients, this could feel a little bit overwhelming for them. You can still verify their domain on their behalf if you got access to their DNS provider. If your clients are more technical, they'll probably appreciate the fact that they have access to their activity and their logs, see what's working and see what's bouncing. Uh, this can be a really great help to more proactive, technically minded clients. And what's cool is this is truly white labeled. There's no mention of Elastic Email anywhere. Before we wrap this up, let's just head back over to the sub account section here so we can get a bird's eye view of what it'll look like to manage a lot of clients using this interface. I really like this. You'll get a list of your sub accounts and then just at a glance, you can see their sending reputation. If you click on the triple dots over here, you can also see some statistics about what they're sending out. If they're getting a lot of spam, if they're getting a lot of abuse, how many email credits they have left, so on and so forth. So overall, this solves a huge issue that we have as an agency. So hopefully it helps you out as well. If you're looking to get started with Elastic Email, you can try a 14-day free trial using my link down below. That will help support the channel if you sign up. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments or head over to profitable.tools. We've got a brand new community section there, kind of moving things away from Facebook slowly. The Facebook group is still there as well uh, if you want to check that out. Love to hear from you and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know if it was and I'll see you in the next one.